This is Professor L. V. Gaikwad's English Literature Web. I am Professor L. V. Gaikwad is discussing today the topic lecture number 373. The topic is Dejection and Ode by H. T. Coleridge. This is part first. Before going to discuss the topic, I will request you to like and subscribe my channel. I will request you to see all the notes which I have put there in the description box. Now we will go to the topic. At first we will see the introduction. The introduction tells this poem is related with Coleridge's addiction of consuming opium and the sorrow on his unwilling talent. Remember the poet has the habit of taking opium and that's why he has got dejection in his life and his talent is not working properly according to the poet. Coleridge has addressed this poem to his beloved Sarah Hutchinson. Remember the poet has the beloved, her name is Sarah Hutchinson and he has written this poem only to address her. He phrases dejection here personally as a personal poem. So remember this is the personal poem or this is the autobiographical poem in which the poet personally is um, phrasing the particular uh, dejection means the sorrow means he has been very much uh, melancholic and he is uh, phrasing that melancholy or he is phrasing that particular dejection. Now we are discussing about the body of the poem. In the body of the poem the poet says the poet Collery says his mind that the sorrow means he is talking about his mind that the sorrow has caught the silent wind blowing atmosphere. Remember the atmosphere is very silent and the wind is blowing outside and his mind has caught or that mind has been caught by that silent atmosphere. Actually, the atmosphere is silent, but the poet is disturbed because of this dejection. He looks the new moon in the lap of the old moon. That is the instruction of serious change in nature means there will be some seriousness. There will be some dangerous uh, uh, change in the atmosphere of the nature. The poet is looking. It is happening only because of his dejection. As for Sir Patrick Spain's ballad, the stormy wind is about to come. It means that there is the suggestion to the poet that the storm can come or can enter into the life of the poet. And Coleridge also wants and needs such a rain as his talent works more in it. Means the storm will bring the rain and in that rain the talent of the poet will work easily and that's why the poet also wants that rain there. Here is the poet confident that this rain will change his dejection into the solemn pleasure because there is no any kind of happiness that is the pleasure in the life of the poet and that's why this rain will bring that pleasure into his life. He has the guarantee of it. His sorrow is miraculously disliking matter. He doesn't feel a pang of sorrow. Remember the Tremendous sorrow is there in the life of the poet, but the poet says that there is no any kind of feeling to him about the pang of the sorrow, means about the uh, torture of the sorrow. He talks with his beloved that he has been looking the grandeur of the yellow and green colors in the west sky, means he is describing that the nature is very uh, nature is very uh, full of grandeur and there is the yellow and green colors in the west sky. The thrushel bird is singing sweetly with the lighted floating clouds in the sky means here the poet is talking about the beauty of the nature and that's why we can say this is the nature poem also. The crescent moon in the unclouded sky is stable. Remember the stable moon is there in the sky and the uh, moon that is the queen moon is there that is the particular uh, shining is there of that particular 
crescent moon is there. But these eyes pleasing and jill creating objects in the sky cannot attract him, attract him uh, though they are great and beautiful. Remember, everything is great, everything is beautiful. Uh, eyes pleasing atmosphere is there. There is the jill creating uh, uh, objects are there in the sky. But all these objects are not uh, attracting the mind of the poet, the soul of the poet. That is the um, that is the explanation of the poet. Coleridge has lost his natural happiness, and this happiness will not be there in nature beauty. Means he says that there is no happiness uh, uh, like uh, the happiness which will be make him happy because uh, he is there dejected. And that's why he is looking that change in the atmosphere of the nature. Because man's soul is the real source of emotions. Remember here Coleridge says that if man is happy in soul, then he can look the nature also happy outside. Uh, so he says, if the poet is happy in the soul, the nature can give happiness. It means that if that poet is happy, actually the poet is unhappy because of his dejection and that's why he cannot see that nature happy outside. The nature has no freshness, that is life, uh, we force that upon it. It means that here uh, Connery says that we force upon the nature that particular happiness. Actually, we should be happy in our heart in our soul then we can see that nature happy it is the talk of the uh, poet called Coleridge. He talks with the beloved and says she possesses the pure mind and heart. Heart it means that his beloved is very much a sacred. He tells her that she should not ask him what the music of the soul is and where its beauty comes to birth. The man of sacred mind knows it automatically and his beloved shall know it easily uh, being pure hearted. So his beloved is very much pure hearted and that's why she will understand the importance and the beauty of the nature according to Coleridge. This real mind only connects us with the nature. The nature is pure like his beloved. The nature beauty is, repli is a replica of happiness in man's mind that is in the mind of the poet. Now we are going to the conclusion. In the conclusion, Coleridge says uh, the teaching like this. It means that by studying this poem, we can learn the following teaching of Coleridge. Means when we learn this poem, we can say the following criticisms here. The first is that the addicted person like the poet can lose a lot in life. Remember, if the person is addicted, he can lose many things in his life because the poet has um, lost his life as well as his beloved. His addiction has made uh, him the dejected person, means he has become dejected because of his addiction. Coleridge has been ignored by his beloved Sarah, that is Sarah Hutchinson or Asra, we will say. So he goes through the dejection here. He looks nature dejected, being dejected. Remember, he himself is dejected. That's why he is looking that nature very dejected. The moon in the lap of the moon suggests the arrival of the storm. The falling rain gives silence to the pet. Due to this addiction, his sorrow is difficult to diagnose. Only due to his dejection, the poet says, the nature is unable to provide happiness. According to the poet, the nature is grandeur for man. Remember here in this poem, the poet is uh, praising the nature because according to him, this nature is very much useful to man. He is a guide to man like William Wordsworth. He is talking here. Our saint Tukarama in Marathi literature has also given us the importance of nature. In this way here, Coleridge is also telling us the importance of nature. Happiness lives in man's soul and not in nature according to Coleridge. Because nature is dumb, we can experience it happily if our soul is happy. The pure-hearted persons can experience only the beauty of nature. Finally, he says his beloved is pure so she can enjoy the beauty of nature. This poem presents here Coleridge 
unfulfilled autobiographical elements of life remember this is the poem in which he has explained his autobiographical elements so here today we have finished this topic again we will be in front of each other with a new topic till then thank you thank you very much